Uh, Sharon oversees the, the training and consulting division of TUV Rainland uh, and has set up a competence center of CSR and sustainability to provide um, solutions on sustainability strategy, GRI reporting, and, uh, and building capacity in the supply chain. So I'd like to say, yeah, welcome, welcome Sharon, uh, who will talk more about GRI reporting, but from her, her perspective as a, as a trainer. Good afternoon, everyone. For a platform to be successful, we need to hear different voices. But I think today we make it happen. We hear different ideas. We hear different voices today. Some speakers said, some people say auditing doesn't work. But our guest from Huawei, without editing, I cannot make my supply chain a better place. Some people say, I don't want to put everything in the report. I want something more. But we also have some other guests say, the reporting system has been further evolved. Even under United Nations and European Union, more guidance and introductions are being introduced in. Some of them are even compulsory. We heard some voice saying the so-called sustainability and the CSR report from the company is not real. They are just ESG KPI report because they haven't got a real understanding towards sustainability. We also heard the opposite voice in the past Several ten years, the CSR has been very well developed in the world, but there are still a lot of things we can do. What we have done is really subtle. We haven't reached the breakthrough yet. I have been in CSR for ten years as well in China. We are growing together with companies. We are confronted with many challenges. We are working with institutions to develop more KPIs. Based on my point of view, in the past several years, we have more and more colleagues working in CSR, and we have done a lot of efforts. We have achieved a lot of goals. But on the other hand, as for the measurement, we have accumulated a lot, yet we are still trying harder to seek for a breakthrough point in order to achieve a big leap forward. This is something we haven't achieved before. We haven't found the right total solution yet. So today, I want to take this opportunity to share with you a best practice. It may not be the best, but I want to share with you TUV Renland as an independent third-party standardization and consultation provider, what we think CSR is like, what is our understanding towards sustainability and CSR. As a third party, how we view sustainable development. TUV Roland, we have 142 years old history already. Upon the foundation of it, the triangle logo embraced the destiny of our organization. Chief Ryland has supported the harmonious development of the humankind technology. Up till now, 140 years have passed by, and this mission is not outdated. So in the unbalanced world, it becomes more important. I want to share with you, for 140 years, Chief Friend Island has gone through a lot of things. We see a lot of standards, a lot of symbols, a lot of figures. I don't know for 
you who are engaged in CSR, do you know about this? When we are talking about things,、uh, talking about sustainability, and doing about sustainability, no matter we are doing it internally or helping our partners. Actually, for over 100 years, Chief Van Rijland, as a third-party accreditation organization, it formulated standards and provided services to enterprises. We can see from the earliest days, and the society pays more to safety, quality. Later, the focus turns to environment, energy. Now we also see a series of standards that are launched to standardize the behaviors of the enterprises. And for Chief Island, as the biggest accreditation and consulting company, with eighty thousand employees, and how do we implement our CSR? And together with enterprises like Huawei, if you know about CSR report, we also would like to welcome your comments. Actually, we've been working together with Huawei about their sustainability, and also for the reports. Just like Timothy Hui has said, it's just the approach instead of the goal. It's a result, but the process also needs to have systematic. Support like ISO 26000, and in combination with the standards, Huawei has made a lot of efforts and experiments. So we are pushing. And for Chief Rayland, so our sustainability and CSR is trying to think for the future. As an organization, normally we will recognize the sustainability reports of enterprises, including GI, and starting from 2012, we also started to write our own sustainability report. In the beginning, it was limited to Germany, and in 2010. We integrated our accounting and non-financial and non-financial reports, and we also wrote the report in the format of GI. And for the scope of the reports, we expanded globally. This is our 2011 report, 2012, and 2013 report. You can actually download our 2013 report from TV.com, and we also have some copies available from our booth. Actually, we have received gold award, so we have followed the requirements for GRI requirements, and we have also received a third-party accreditation. Actually, we have also evaluated related existing standards and analyzed its applicability. And also, EU has launched a directive for non-financial reports. That is also a directive we refer to, but that is mainly for listed companies. Chief Ryland is not a listed company, but. But we will also focus on our investors on their assessment for our performance. And IRRC is something we've been paying attention to for a long time. For a comprehensive report, that will be the future direction for us as well. And ultimately, our evaluation, we believe that TRI. GI is most suitable for current phase of our company. Integrated reporting 
is something we have been trying, and will be the target we are moving towards. So we're trying to turn our financial report and CSR report together, but it's not. Just a simple integration of both reports. Actually, what it needs to show is that from the top management, we already have the the integrated thinking, and for the company's strategy, we also include the CSR strategy. Just like some of the speakers have mentioned. Actually, the major thing is the focus. It's not that we'll do everything, and we will try to focus on the things that we can manage well. And for our stakeholders, those things that are most important for our stakeholders and our organization, because our company is a third-party accreditation. Body, so we believe that external evaluation would be something pushes us to achieve higher data quality. Because integrated reporting has very high requirements for release time, so that is also a lot of pressure for us to write this report. But we have to mention is that while we are. Helping the enterprises to write their report, the biggest challenge is how do we sort out all those materials? If we have reported this year, what do we report next year? And I want to share with you our approach. First, new report, we have KPI. And these indicators and materials will be obtained by integrating them into the current system instead of to create some new systems to collect those materials. Because we are using SAP globally, so all our materials are embedded into our SAP system. For example, actually all the regions. Because we are distributed in 140, 160 countries, and for all those offices, for their electricity bill, will be collected by the finance. Before, so we just show the amount of the electricity bill, but in our sustainability report, we will show. About the energy consumption statistics, and which is different from the electricity bill amount, because the unit price is different. So we can create some additional data, but that is within the current system. So the finance team will be very easy to add that into the system. So try to utilize your current system instead of create. Adding some additional burden for the administration to collect the materials. If you cannot do it in your current system, we will have a unified data system that has to be created. And on the top, you need to integrate it with CSR and. Sustainability. So this report covers Germany and 14 more countries. Speaking of the process, actually it's very similar. Expectation of the parties. So we will have roundtable for survey. Chief Ryland strategic analysis, and the, we can develop our practical analysis. And the framework of our report is about management of CSR, compliance, employees, and environment, and the society. I want to share with you about about the materiality of our sustainability strategy as a third party. We are 
providing services instead of products. So which be will be a little bit different from some enterprises. And in the economic chapter, the first thing is provide sustainable services. For us, for our team, it gives us a lot of innovation, creativity, creative thought, and the green solutions come Greater China. Our team and also CSR goal, and also customer demands. So we develop a series of green solutions. And these solutions covers the scope, including products, systems, transportation, buildings, new energies, etc. For example, green products. For green products, we developed a green product label, and this label. Actually, we are issuing to Lenovo this green product label so that they can go global and earn trust from the consumers. Because by evaluating some indicators, we have proven that their products comply with Chief Ryland's green products requirements. This is one aspect that shows our, our mission of CSR. It also gives us economic. Actually, we can become closer to our clients, and as a third-party organization, we also work together with public and private funds. Maybe it sounds unfamiliar. Uh, we can give you an example. With German government and EU government, we have a comprehensive cooperation. For example, this project was launched in 2005 with German government. This is called PPP campaign. So we developed a series of supply chain solutions with this fund to help the enterprises to enhance their productivity, so that. We can create some gear effect and push them to develop in terms of CSR. This solution is widely used in a lot of brands. So far, it is has been continuing its implementation. It actually. Has become the best practice of supply chain in 2013. This is was last month, together with UNLP. We are actually the first.、Uh, we are actually the first organization to be approved by IOO to launch IOO's school system. So we want to use this system to help. Employees in China to improve their work environment and improve productivity. This is Switch Asia project, which is a a supporting project from EU to China. In China, starting from this year, for four consecutive years, we are going to. Implement this project. So we implement this in Shanxi Province, and the funds、um, involved is 1.7 million euros. This project is something that will make me busy for the next four years. And also, Millennium Plan in. Of、e、UN in São Paulo in Brazil, we work together with the housing administration to renovate the gut area. So we are helping 
some poor people to improve their living environments. So we are outputting our technical staff, te technical strengths, to help them to improve their sewage treatment. Speaking of our organization, we care a lot about our employees. Actually, the biggest assets for us is our people, because we are an engineer-oriented company. So, for gender diversity, especially for leadership, our female employees account for 15 percent. So, according to our analysis, that is something we need to improve. With a series of activi activities, especially in Germany, we are trying to promoting female employees growth, especially in the young legal team. My last slide. Actually, for sustainability, we can never talk it without mentioning next generation. So, in the first slide, you see two children. So on my last slide, I want to share with you about Tiftel. It's our magazine for children. This is a magazine for children and, and teenagers, which focuses on children's safety and protection of the earth awareness. So it uses colorful pictures and games to attract the children by utilizing our technical skill set. So if you have children, you can actually get some sample magazines from our booth. So you can take it home for your children. So starting from the childhood, we want to build the awareness of quality and environment for the children. So that has been well received by the Ministry of Education in Germany. Since last year, we have translated into Chinese and released that in China as well. Last but not least, I hope that we can work together with all of you. We are still in the process of quantitative changes. We hope that someday we will achieve qualitative change so that we can have a more beautiful earth. Thank you.